eight year old boy actually admitted for upper respiratory infection. The child was running on the corridor, slipped and fell, brought to the ER. Very senior orthopedic surgeon saw, took an X-ray of the forearm. Some mild pain here and there. Give a sling, discharge. Two weeks later, mom noticed a small swelling in front of the elbow. Took them, took the child to a nearby hospital, and another X-ray was taken. And this was seen. So why did this happen? This happened to a very senior surgeon who is well aware of the principles. And hopefully, we shall answer it during the course of our talk. And this was managed by a very young postgraduate, actually. Came to the ER. And you see a very pronounced anterior ulnar bow and a montagia. And it was successfully closely reduced. So why the first was missed and the second one was not? So why do we miss it? We miss it because of poor awareness, generally, and poor x-rays. We take an x-ray, we don't want to expose the child to a lot of radiation. We either take a, a forearm x-ray or an elbow x-ray. And we generally don't insist on a true AP or a true lateral. And a failure to suspect that Montagia could be a possibility because the acute Montagia, especially the milder ones, have very less symptoms. And there are very many variants of the injury. That was the second ARS question. There are so many variants for this injury that it is very easy to miss them. And in the first case, we saw how the surgeon missed the initial one. And then two weeks later, it detected that the Montagia was there. So the plastic deformation of the ulna, however mild it is, can precipitate a radial head dislocation much later. So that is something that we have to keep in mind. It may not occur on day one. So we all are familiar with this classification. This is the Bado classification. Montagia itself described it in the 19th century. And Bado revised it and made this classification. This is what, as a postgraduate, everybody would learn. So there are, depending on the apex of the angulation, these are classified into four types, anterior, posterior, lateral, and then the fourth one where both the ulna and the radius are fractured. So this was subsequently improved because it didn't account for a large variety of injury which we see, and this was improved upon. And we see three improvements for this with various subtypes. The first two lines are improved by Bardo, and that is only dealing with the type one uh, uh, Montagia. And then subsequently we have Let's and then Wiley also. And the last one is uh, current favorite. This I think I'm getting the pronunciation correct, Olini and Chepelik. And this one, recognizing that there are so many variants, describe a Montagia lesion as any ulna fracture with a radius fracture or a radial neck fracture or a radial head dislocation. So they make it very broad. So if you see these little arrow marks here, the fracture of ulna can occur at any of these places, and then there is an unspecified injury uh, on the radius at around that point. So this is the classification which I showed you. I don't want to go into details, but this is the classification which is broadly divided into three groups. So the telltale radiographic signs which we are all taught is to pick up the Mubarak's line, which is very sensitive. It is as sensitive as 0 0.01 mm. So sometimes it is so fine that even when you draw the line, you can actually miss the bow. So this is uh, uh, ulna bow sign, which is the most sensitive. And the radio capital L line, however, as I alluded to earlier, 15% of them don't intersect. And this is something that we get it wrongly. We say that at any position of the elbow, the radio capital R line should go through the center of capital M, and that is not so. And not only that, it doesn't apply in the very young age group. It doesn't apply when the physis is immature. So there are lots of caveats for the radio capital R line. So you can use it as a tool, but be aware of the limitations. Another thing we should be aware of is a delayed plastic bowing and dislocation, which can happen. So how not to miss? Normal radiological anatomy you should be very familiar with and a high index of suspicion. You should always ask for separate x-rays of the elbow and a separate x-ray of the forearm. 
that is very very important and it can be a very innocuous fall the child presents to you with and be aware of a late subluxation so it's no harm to call the child back uh, one week later to reassess and see if uh, you are if you have a suspicion to reassess whether there has been a dislocation and especially be suspicious of length unstable ulna fractures and this is the ones where there is possibility of subluxation so the sub, the bow can be so subtle so if you actually see this one here you would be forgiven for thinking that there is no ulna bow but little down the line you see that there is a very subtle bow and this has caused this montagia lesion and be aware of all these variants these are all montagias so each one is different from the other and that is where all these variants come in so you see this uh, occur in so much uh, variety and you see uh, uh, somewhere here there is an olecranon fracture and there is a distal radius fracture these occur in almost as, per, as much as 30% uh, along with the montagia lesions so this i leave you with this thought this uh, is presented to a surgeon who operated who detected the montagia operated put this wire anything wrong okay apart from that this is actually the post op wire this was taken many weeks later uh, as my colleague used to say a supervised oblique view and this is the actual uh, post operative k wire which is subluxed so that's why i leave you with this thought these are the indices and have a high index of suspicion thank you